All right, so today we're going to add a little bit more life to our game. Uh, as it's been going so far, we have the pieces just kind of pop in out of nowhere. So what I'd like to do is create a system where instead of just appearing, the pieces kind of slide in from the top of the screen. It's going to create an effect similar to Candy Crush, but not exactly the same. So say that we have our pieces here. When they're being created, rather than having them be created exactly where they should be, we're going to create them uh, a certain amount off. So, for example, if we created these pieces 10 units up, that amount would be called our offset here. Uh, and then, after we create the piece, we tell it what row and column it should be in, then it will move towards that row and column based on the code that we've already entered. So right now, we're setting the uh, row and column when the object is created, so we're going to need to change that. And we're also creating this temporary position variable that is the ij from the double for loops that we created. So we're going to have to add an offset to the j part, so that instead of being created right where it should be, it's created a certain distance above. And then that way it should look like it's kind of sliding in. And then we'll have to duplicate that code when we refill the board. So, let's get to it. Okay, so this is what our project looks like as far as how far we've gotten right now. Now there's a few logic errors in here that some of you may or may not have noticed and we will get to fixing those, don't worry. So first of all, if I make a swap, uh, the uh, columns will collapse um, and then new dots are generated. And then if I swap somewhere where it doesn't make a match, then it'll swap back just fine. So let's just make another match here just again just to show you that showing up. The good way about doing it this way, or the good thing about doing it this way, is that uh, if there's multiple matches, that'll show up. Now, I just had an error right there. It did the four in the row correctly, but then it thought that these two off to the side made a three in the row with this one here. So that's one of the errors that we're going to fix, which we'll get to that soon. First, though, let's have the pieces kind of slide in instead of just appearing magically. So what I want to do first is I want to go to my dot script. And the way that I have it set up right now, I'm setting the the row, the column, the previous row, and the previous column when the item is generated. I don't want to do that. Instead, I want the row and column to be set when it's um, instantiated through the board method. And then I also want the previous row and previous column to be set when I move it. So, this is thinking just a little bit here. Um, okay. As soon as this gets all up and loaded here. Okay, cool. So the first thing I want to do is I'm just going to comment it out. I'm not going to necessarily um, remove it. Instead, I'm just commenting it out in case I want to use it again and in, in case I break something to make sure that I know that um, what I broke is, is okay. Uh, okay. So right now I have my target X set. I'm going to comment out these as well. So right now the only thing I'm doing in my start method is just finding the board. Now I'm going to save this. And I'm going to jump over to my board here really quickly. Now, in my setup method, I am creating uh, a temporary position, which is a vector 2, which is i, and then j. I'm going to create an offset here. So I'm going to create a variable for that. So up here in my board class, uh, after my width and height, I'm going to create a public integer. I'm going to call this um, offset, which is going to be uh, the offset at which they're being created. So up how many, down how many, whatever. So then in here, my temporary position, I'm going to change this from being j to being j plus offset. Um, and then creating the dot, creating the dot, and then down here. I'm saying that my dot here is being instantiated at the temporary position, meaning that it's being instantiated at its correct column, but its row is higher than it needs to be. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to set the row and column of the dot in this method here. So I'll do dot get component and the component I want to get is the dot script. 
and then I want to do the row is equal to J and then I'm going to do the same thing for the column so I'll just copy this paste it there and I'll say the column is equal to I so let me save this um, this is going to break a few things first of all nothing's going to know where their previous row or previous column was but I can still use this to kind of check to make sure that things are being put where they should. So if I go to my board here, I'm going to set my offset to be, say, 10. And when I hit play, da -da -da. and there we go. It's kind of hard to see there. Let's make the offset even bigger. I don't know. Let's make it like 20. And you can see them kind of slide in from the top of the screen. And there we go. So that's having them kind of slide in. Now let's uh, make them slide in when they're being when new dots are being generated as well. So then back here to my board class, I'm going to go down to where I'm creating new dots. So that's going to be here in my refill board method. I'm going to create the piece, set all dots ij to be the piece, and then I'm going to do piece dot get component and the component I want to get is the dot component. I'll say dot row is equal to j and I'll do something similar for the column. Uh, so dot row, it's dot column is equal to i. Now before stuff can actually work uh, the way it's supposed to, I need to have that previous row and previous column set somewhere inside of the the dot. If I leave it how it is, where it was being set in the start method, um, I can have some issues with the order in which the scripts are executed. But right now, nothing knows what its previous row and previous column was. So if I switch it, it does that weird thing where this one knew what its previous row and previous column was because we set that in the script. The other one didn't. So Unity automatically assigned a value of 0, 0 to those, which is why it jumped way down here. So I'm going to go into my dot script here, and I'm going to set my previous row and previous column. I'm just going to copy these two lines of code here when I move the piece. So if I go all the way down to where I'm moving the pieces, uh, I have my other dot is that. And before I change the other dot's column, I'm going to change this dot's column and previous row. So I'm going to set its previous row to row previous column to column, and then, then I'm changing the other dots column. I think this should be good. Uh, if it isn't, then we'll have to do the same thing for uh, the other dot. So let's just kind of copy and paste these in here. We have four methods we have to do it for. So, or not methods, but conditional statements. So just copying these in. This is just where it made sense to me to check for the previous row and previous column. Um, there are other places we could put it, but that just made sense. If we're moving it, we might as well have it know right then what its previous row and previous column was. So now if I hit play, I have my pieces kind of fall in and they go away. And there we go. And let's do this one. Let's see, there was that error again. Uh, do this one. Cool. Uh, let's do one more. Do, 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 do here. All right, cool. Cool. All right. So I want to check one more thing here really quickly. It didn't look like those new pieces were falling in like they should. Oh, that's why. Because I have to add my offsets. So I'm setting their row and column, but I need to have them have their offset in the refill board method here. So if I go back to Unity, if I hit play, I have my first pieces should be kind of sliding in like that. And then if I make a match, there, my new pieces slide in as well. So that makes it look better. We still have an error in our logic about the matches. Sometimes it detects a match when there isn't one and we'll be fixing that next time.
but for now that should you know kind of get us started here we got a project here that doesn't look too bad at all so thank you very much um, have a wonderful day if you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments and yeah until next time